Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about afterburners. I'm not going to be going into any math or equations other than this one right here, uh, but we'll still be going into the details of the operation. If you just want to see a high level overview of what afterburners are, check out my In a Nutshell video. So where do we usually see afterburners and what are their purpose? They're usually used during takeoff for periods of acceleration and for supersonic flight. Because of these uh, factors, they're usually only used in military aircraft, although there are a couple of civilian designs that have included them. In general terms, let's see what an afterburner actually does. So take a look at this engine here. First we take in some air. Uh, uh, pass it through a compressor, add some fuel and ignite it, uh, extract enough energy from the turbine to power the compressor, and then with the leftover energy, we uh, turn it into kinetic energy to spit out the back at a certain velocity, UE, and that gives us our thrust. The thrust of an engine essentially boils down to the change of momentum of the gas is going through the engine, as you can see in the simplified thrust equation right here. So in a normal engine, the gas is coming out the back of an engine with no afterburner, still have a pretty high exit velocity, but let's say we wanted to increase the thrust by increasing the exit velocity even further. Because engines operate fuel lean due to temperature limitations of materials used in the turbine, there's excess air left over that wasn't used for combustion, and we can take advantage of this excess air by adding some more fuel in the afterburner, uh, igniting it, and extracting more energy, and with that energy, we can now increase the kinetic energy of the exhaust gases, which increases the velocity of the exhaust gases, which thus increases the thrust. You might be asking yourself why we don't just design the engine initially for that high thrust, and then just ignore the afterburner altogether. Well, it makes more sense uh, in terms of efficiency to design the engine for a lower dry thrust, and then have an afterburner for a period when you need the increased extra thrust. The weight reduction of only having to add that hollow jet pipe at the end of the engine outweighs the increase in uh, fuel consumption. Now to put things simply, decreases in stagnation temperatures and stagnation pressures through the engine are indicative of losses which are bad. By adding a jet pipe, the afterburner, you end up getting stagnation pressure losses due to the drag from the flame holders, friction from the pipe, and when the afterburner is on, heat addition at a finite flow speed or Mach number. However, these losses again are a better alternative than increasing the dry thrust of the engine. You might be thinking you can only have an afterburner in a turbojet engine, but you can actually have them in turbofan engines as well. And in fact, most military engines now are actually turbofan engines just with very low bypass ratios. This comes with its own set of problems because before we can burn a fuel, we have to evaporate it, and evaporation is harder at lower temperatures. The bypass air is at a fairly low temperature compared to the core stream, so it can be hard to ignite. So to sum up the overview, afterburners take the fuel air mixture coming out of the turbine, add specifically metered fuel to it, ignite it, increase the energy in the jet pipe here, and send it out the propelling nozzle to increase increase the exit velocity of the gas coming out the back end, thus increasing the thrust of the engine. You do get a little bit of extra thrust coming in from the mass fuel flow rate that's going into the engine, but it ends up being dwarfed by the uh, addition of the energy from the combustion of the fuel air mixture. Now that we've gone through an overview of the afterburner, let's go into more detail into the components, and we're going to start with the entry to the afterburner called the diffuser. The afterburner jet pipe is connected to the exit of the turbine by something called a diffuser, and while you may not even see the diffuser when you're looking at a turbojet engine or a turbofan engine, uh, or even think about it when you're thinking about after afterburners, it's a super important component because it needs to slow down the flow coming from the turbine before it enters the afterburner. There's a couple of reasons that we want this low velocity coming into the afterburner. The first is that flame stabilization is harder at higher flow velocities. And the second reason is that the amount of heat that you can add to the flow is governed by the Mach number. And if you add too much heat to the flow, you can actually choke the flow. If you want to learn more about this, check out Rayleigh flow. Also from Rayleigh flow, the stagnation pressure loss through the duct is higher at higher Mach numbers. And recall that we want to reduce this stagnation pressure loss through the engine. Since the flow coming out of the turbine is subsonic, to slow it down even more, we need to have an increasing area. But we don't want the area to increase too much because we want to keep the diameter of the afterburner pipe about the same as the components in, as the other components in the engine so we don't have any problems with installation on aircraft. Now that we've slowed the flow down, we need to inject the fuel into the airstream. The main way this is accomplished is by having radial tubes that are perpendicular to the engine's axis. You can see this is a front or back view, whatever you want to call it, of the engine. So I'm just taking a cross-section view here. You can see that these red lines are these spray bars and this also is just zooming in on one of those single spray bars and with the flow coming towards the camera towards you and so you can see that the spray bars shoot the fuel out sideways which ends up being perpendicular to the gas stream to ignite the fuel we have to evaporate the fuel droplets so that's why we have the uh, spray bars injecting fuel perpendicular to the gas stream because the gas stream then tears apart these droplets into smaller droplets and heat transfer from these hot gases these are still hot gases coming from the turbine heat transfer from that hot gas to the fuel droplets evaporate them, and once they're evaporated, we can ignite them. One of the main factors for droplet evaporation is the initial droplet diameter, so it's beneficial to have sm the smallest droplet diameters that you can have. It's also beneficial to have high pressures here because as the pressure drops, the droplet diameters increase, leading to a higher evaporation time. So droplet evaporation times are higher for higher temperatures, so if you have a turbo fan that has a bypass stream that's cold, the fuel injected into that stream will take longer to evaporate than from the core stream. So we've injected fuel into the stream and it's been evaporated, and this fuel 
air mixture has a lower flame propagation velocity than the velocity of the flow stream. So what I mean by this is imagine I take a little fuel air mixture droplet thing and ignite it and throw it away from me as fast as I can. If I throw it away faster than the flame can propagate back towards me, it won't get back to me. And this is what happens in an engine where if you ignite some piece of fuel air mixture here, it'll propagate down the tube faster than the flame will propagate back up to here. This is important because after the fuel air mixture is ignited here, it won't be able to keep the new incoming fuel air mixture ignited because it will have blown out the back of the engine and this is called blowout. So one way to set up a constant ignition source then is to use these bluff bodies, also called flame holders, which set up a recirculation zone behind them, which keeps the gases recirculating and igniting the new fuel air mixture coming past them. The ignition process just needs to start the stabilized flame and then you can turn off the ignition source, the spark or whatever they're using. Although some engines I believe do use a constant ignition source as well. And so another question might be then, if you have an ignition source, let's say we have an ignition source down here at the bottom of these flame holders. This is me showing a view from the back of the engine looking in at these flame holders. You can see there's one of them here, one of them here, and they have these connecting loops here. So if you have ignition starting at the bottom here, it's been shown that once a little portion down here ignites, it'll spread around these gutters and then through these little passages as well and can ignite all of the fuel air mixture that's recirculating in those zones all around the uh, flame holders. Different engines have different flame holder orientations. Some of them have some clustered here and they can be staggered and also in the bypass stream and it's very engine dependent. Engines also stagger the ignition of these different of the different flame holders uh, to avoid pressure uh, fluctuations in the engine that are undesired. Like I mentioned before the bypass stream is colder so it's harder to ignite there because the temperatures are lower and so what you can do then is first ignite the core stream have that set up a nice stabilized recirculating flame and then try to ignite the bypass streams. The size of the flame holders is a trade-off because bigger bluff bodies will give a better recirculation zone. However, they will also increase the drag uh, in the engine. So now we have the fuel evaporated, ignited, and stabilized in these flame holders. We can make some interesting observations if we assume that the heat is added uniformly in a 1D channel. And of course, the afterburner is a 3D object, but making this assumption can give us some interesting insights. For subsonic flow, the gas will speed up with heat addition, but this can only happen up to a certain point at which the Mach number will then be one, so the flow will be sonic, and then the duct will be choked. As mentioned before, this 1D heat addition is called Rayleigh flow. Similar results can be found for friction in a pipe, and this is called Fano flow, and so the friction in this pipe will again increase the Mach number, but only up to the certain point where the Mach number then equals one, and the flow is sonic, and then you get choked flow again. The length of the jet pipe from here to here is also important because we need to make sure that there's enough time for the chemical reactions to fully take place to release the total amount of energy that we can. However, with longer jet pipes, friction also increases, and so does the weight of the actual structure of the jet pipe. Aside from just the choking phenomena of the Rayleigh flow and the Fano flow, so the heat addition and the friction, you also get stagnation pressure losses, which we mentioned was not good for engines. Using the lower Mach number coming in will decrease those stagnation pressure losses, but you'll always get it when you add heat and have friction in a finite Mach number flow. Now, large amplitude pressure oscillations accompany the combustion process. We'd like to damp out these high pressure oscillations before any structural damage is done so we have these resonators that are built into the uh, afterburner walls. So down here you can see a schematic of the liner and then the outer case and then the liner we have these holes that are placed uh, strategically along it. So the first benefit of this liner is that the process of pushing and sucking air back out through these holes takes energy out of the acoustic mode and puts it into the kinetic mode. For acoustic suppression these liners work best at frequencies above a kilohertz. And a second reason for these liners is that we'll have cooler air passing between the liner and the outer case, and that will help keep the outer case at a reasonable temperature. So now we've burned all the fuel with the air, we need to intelligently push all this gas out the exit. Recall from before that I said the most efficient operation of the engine is when the gases are expanded at the exit of the nozzle to the atmospheric exit pressure. The control system of the afterburner wants to meter the fuel to keep the pressure level in the afterburner at the right level by increasing or decreasing the nozzle throat area. Engines have used both open loop and closed loop systems. In an open loop system, the pilot requests a certain throttle and based off, a, off of a predetermined schedule, the engine delivers a certain fuel flow rate and a certain uh, throat and exit area for the nozzle. Closed loop systems have more feedbacks that allow you to more accurately set the fuel flow rate and the nozzle exit area, but they include more sensors in the design, which are not actually trivial to add. If you've invested the effort into using an afterburner in your engine, you're most likely going to use a converging diverging nozzle to expand the gases in your engine. Converging nozzles are cheaper and they weigh less, but converging diverging nozzles are better at efficiently expanding out the 
gases and thus increasing the exit velocity and the thrust. There's two areas to the nozzle. One is the throat, which is the minimum area of the nozzle, and the second is the exit area. The throat of the nozzle fixes the mass flow rate through the engine, while the exit area, the ratio of the exit area to the throat area, fixes the expansion of the gases through the nozzle. So the culmination of the processes discussed previously uh, is pretty much just a super high exit velocity coming out of your engine, which increases the thrust of the engine at increased rates of fuel flow. While at a quick glance, the afterburners seem like a pretty simple part of a jet engine, they are in fact just as complex as the other parts of the jet engine. I hope this video gave you a little bit more insight into their operation, and if you want to check out more, check out the references in the video description. Thanks for watching.